Hi, my name is Jim Malamud and I'm the CEO of Mediate.com. I can begin with a bit of my background. I'm from Chicago originally. I got my undergraduate degree at Stanford in psychology and then my law degree from the University of Oregon uh, and then became a practicing member of the Oregon Bar. Well, it started out with um, a bunch of mavericks, a bunch of creatives, a bunch of entrepreneurs who really were not doing things in the conventional way. And what they knew, uh, and what we all know, is that the vast majority of cases have always settled. Uh, 95, 97 percent are going to settle. And this is true even without mediation. They may not settle very well, and they may settle at the last minute, but they tended to settle. And so people started asking themselves the common sense question, if we're going to settle anyhow, you know, why not settle earlier and better? Uh, so couldn't we have, instead of you know, barely sufficient settlement discussions, most capable discussions, and instead of barely capable solutions, most capable solutions? So the initial folks that really got into mediation, I think, were focused on helping people most capably problem solve. Uh, not in a barely capable way, but in a most capable way. And this really is the reputation that mediation developed, is that it was superior discussion, figuring out often fairly thorny issues. Uh, over time, as mediation has been institutionalized and drawn into the courts and agencies, now they'll say, well, we want you to mediate, but you know, in no more than two hours, and we've got a basement room you know, just for you. Uh, so some of the magic and luster of mediation uh, has lessened as it's become institutionalized. One of the project that, projects that Mediate.com has undertaken over the last three or four years was to film approximately 100 of the leading mediators in the world. And uh, we thought it was going to be a six-month project, and it ended up being almost four years. Uh, one of the work products of this was this book, which includes uh, 64 different DVDs of perhaps the leading uh, interviews. And then all of these interviews, as well as more, about 100 total, are online at Mediate.com and also available as a searchable video database. So we've taken the best clips and we've named them and keyworded them and abstracted them and you can actually search the video clips as well as watch the entire interviews. Sure. Uh, so my story, at least as far as mediation goes, uh, is that I first became somewhat familiar with mediation in law school. Uh, this was back in the late 70s before they had dedicated courses to negotiation or mediation or ADR. Uh, but I did some independent study of land use and environmental mediation, also family mediation. And there came a day in 1983 uh, where the one mediator who had been working in Eugene, Oregon, uh, decided to move to Alaska. And uh, he had been working with a psychologist, and she was now looking for a substitute male attorney mediator. And that was my light bulb. And uh, a couple weeks later, I gave notice at a law firm I was working at and decided to go into family mediation and did that. For a number of years. This is 1983. Uh, so continuing the story, uh, developed a private practice. These were the times before state associations. So in 1985 a group of us established the Oregon Mediation Association and I became the first president and executive director of that. Uh, these were the days where we were just getting word processing and desktop publishing and so nonprofits were feeling a bit more capable. Uh, 1985 in Oregon there was a legislative body that was developing mediation legislation and I got to take part in that and that became a commission, the Dispute Resolution Commission which for 20 years managed mediation in Oregon. It no longer, no, it no longer exists as part of a uh, small agency abolition movement recently. Uh, but back in 1985, they established a variety of mediation legislation. In 1987, it passed. And also that year, I got hired by the Academy of Family Mediators, which was the 
national private sector divorce mediation group and worked for them for six years. So from 87 to 93, ran the Academy of Family Mediators. And this was the heyday of divorce mediation. This is when uh, our membership went from 800 members to 3,600 members in six years uh, to give you a sense of the groundswell of private divorce mediation services in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, 93, I stopped working for the Academy of Family Mediators. I went back into practice and also to training uh, and have continued training mediators to this date. Uh, that was in 93. In 96, <coughs> partner John Healy uh, and I established Mediate.com. That was January 1 of 1996. Uh, John had previously run a telecommunications company, a really a nonprofit called ConflictNet, which was part of the Institute for Global Communications, the IGC networks, and I had worked with AFM. Uh, at AFM back in 87, when I first took the job, one of the first things I did was to get all of our board members on email. Uh, this was 1987, which was eight years before the commercial internet. Um, this was back in the era of proprietary electronic networks. Uh, Prodigy would have been an example. And very early, I had my whole board of directors and myself online back in 1987. And there's no question that our ability to easily communicate on a daily basis electronically was something that really helped grow the field at least of divorce mediation I at that time. And then back in 96 when we opened Mediate.com, the premise was an accurate one, which was that um, even though only 5% of people in, in 1993 had email addresses, that in fact every professional would need an email address, every mediator would need an email address, and that every professional and mediator would need a website as well if only to, in a transparent way, uh, represent who they are. And that basic prediction is held true uh, for our field. And so now the web presence we need is not just a paragraph description or a picture, but we'll be seeing in the future mediators routinely having videotapes, for example, of themselves describing themselves and, and how they work. So all of this has happened. 25 years. Uh, back in 1983 when I started out, uh, mediation was generally resisted uh, by the courts, generally resisted by attorneys. And now we can see it's really come full circle and the attorneys have come to very much own uh, mediation and mediation has been thoroughly integrated in the courts and, and into the administrative agencies.